people. Yes, they are passionate people. And I think if you care a lot about what other people think, you might be in trouble. Um, I have my own artistic standards. I have my own creative sense of what is good, what is authentic, what is inspired. And that's what I try and pay attention to more than, than how I am received or perceived by an audience. I had a great acting coach once upon a time who told me that, and this was, this was um, advice as far as auditions, you cannot give people what they want. You can only give them what you do. And if what you do is what they want, then you're in business. If it's not, say la vie. Well, first let's unpack that confidence piece. <laughs> uh, right now, for example, I am, I am really nervous. <laughs> so it's, it's, for me, it's a both and. It's, it's confidence and I'm also terrified. Um, I think of myself as a warrior, but I'm also uh, vulnerable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, it's good for me to check in with myself and how I'm feeling physically. Like right now, for example, uh, as I acknowledged, I am feeling uh, some nervousness, some, some anxiousness, uh, a desire to please. Um, some pressure to be perfect, uh, some pressure to speak beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, because I'm constantly, moment by moment, reminding myself that none of that is necessary. Um, I can show up, I am free to show up in, in whatever way I find myself, like how I am is perfect, flaws and all. If what I say resonates with no one, that's fine. If what I say resonates with one person, beautiful. Um, it's a constant kind of balance between uh, openness and guardedness, confidence and vulnerability. It's not easy, but it reaffirms my sense of what balance is. I used to hear that word and I would think of this kind of zen-like surrendered state. Oh, I'm, I'm balanced now. But what balance is, is more like a tightrope walker where you're constantly having to make little adjustments so that you don't topple over one way or the other. That, to me, is my new working definition of balance. And that allows me to be okay with, I am speaking, this is my truth, there is, beauty in being self-expressed, and it's also terrifying. It's rewarding, and I'm also regretting having come today. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. it's all of the mm -hmm. above. To find a space where you feel like you have permission to be authentic um, is, is precious, and we don't get that necessarily with even friends and, and with even friends and family. Um, there was a reason that the men in the Mankind Project call each other brothers, not friends, because a brother will tell you something that a friend will not. Well, <laughs> acting provides me a safe and structured container in which I get to put all of those things that we're talking about. So when I'm playing Michael Schofield, for example, and he's having to, um, to get what he wants from someone, and it looks like tears, it looks like screaming, it looks like uh, a wrestling match. Um, none of the words that he's saying are mine, necessarily. And the emotions that I'm pouring into that, no one's gonna know where those are coming from, necessarily. No one will ever get that as an audience member. What they'll get is that Michael's going through something and it resonates as true. It feels like there's some, um, there's some juice here. That's what I mean. So uh, acting provides me um, a safe space in which to share myself, um, but it doesn't look like uh, me writing an autobiography necessarily. But it is me, but it's not, but it's me, but it's not. A, I was able to get it out of me, which felt good. And then I was also able to see that my process of self-expression, which is inherently, I think, self-centered, and I use that phrase in a positive way, can also be of service to others. When I go to those places and acknowledge, this is hard for me, this is fearful for me, this is a place where I, I feel shame, um, 
I am going to those places that everyone would want to go to if we had permission, which ties back concretely for me to what it is to be an actor. Uh, one of my coaches used to say that acting is, it's considered a noble profession because an actor spends their lives running toward the experiences um, and the emotions that the average person spends their lives running away from. That's why it's so important that we have actors, um, because through them and their sharing and their storytelling, we all get to experience collectively a kind of catharsis and transformation. I think you want to go in and not necessarily not necessarily play what you think they're hoping to see, but play your best version of the character. Um, the advice I got once upon a time was, don't read the breakdowns. There's something in the United States where when they're casting for a movie or for a TV show, they will provide uh, what's called the breakdowns, and they have a list of the characters that they're looking to cast with a description of each character. And sometimes it will literally say, we're looking for a young Tom Hanks. And if you're a young Tom Hanks, then the part is probably yours. Like, go get it. If you're a young John Malkovich, then it might not be the right fit. So if you go in and you're a young John Malkovich and you do your best young Tom Hanks impersonation, you're not going to get the part. And not only are you not going to get the part, but they're going to think, wow, that guy is back to class maybe. Um, what you want to do is go in and show them your best young John Malkovich, even if it's not right for the part, because you won't get that part because that's not what they're looking for, but they will remember, wow, that was a fantastic young John Malkovich. I'll keep that, I'll keep that guy in mind for next time. Well, I think what I went through was a process of trial and error. Uh, I think for a long time I was a young John Malkovich trying to be a young Tom Hanks. I was trying to um, fit my myself into a, a round hole um, when I was, in fact, a, a square peg. Uh, I used to walk into auditions and treat them like job interviews, um, especially right after college, like, hey, how are you? Uh, I'm the guy for the job, I, I will memorize all my lines, I'll show up on time. That's not necessarily what they're wanting to see. What they're wanting to see is you, what you have to bring to the table that's unique, that's interesting, um, that's edgy. Uh, it took me a long time to understand that the audition process is about walking into a room full of strangers, unzipping and vomiting out your most private self. And then when the audition is done, you zip up and you go. That is the job. That is the, the working definition of a professional. If someone had explained it to me in those terms when I first graduated, when I was thinking of an audition as a job interview scenario, um, I would have quit acting. It would have been too frightening to me. Uh, so the process of working my way up the ladder in Hollywood from co-star to guest star to series regular to series lead uh, dovetailed and had everything to do with me getting more and more comfortable with showing up as I really was in a variety of situations. Uh, a pivotal switch for me in my thinking about the audition process and my casting in Hollywood was someone explaining to me that your average actor walks into these situations, into a casting, like they're a guest at a dinner party, and they're afraid to track shit in on the carpet. Um, it's the reverse. You have to, to assume the role of host, and what you're hosting them to is you. So eventually, when I had the confidence and an increased sense of who I was and what I had to offer as a man and as an artist, regardless of the role, regardless of what they were looking to cast, I would just tailor it to me. I would make it my own. Mm -hmm. Having read a lot of books and written about a lot of books uh, throughout my college career, uh, analyzing a text, um, investigating character and theme and dialogue, all of that comes into play when I'm uh, sitting with a script and trying to familiarize myself with uh, the part that I've been cast in. Sure. Uh, to go back to that straw into gold model, um, which I think of as you know an alchemical process where we take something that is dark and edgy um, 
our secret shames, the things we don't want anyone to know, and then we make that um, a strength, something that uh, sets us apart, something that makes our story uh, resonant and worth telling. I had an acting coach who used to give lectures before every class, that was his style, hashtag acting coach. Um, and he, he said to us one day, all right, who here wants to be a star? And we all raised our hands. That way, that's why we were there on a Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. And he said, great, I want you to go home and make a list of everything in your life that you are ashamed of, that you would absolutely die if anyone else found out. Just write it all down from your thoughts about your, your physicality to that time you kicked the family dog. Just list it list it all. That's your first list, things I don't want people to know. And then the second list, title that things that are going to make me a star. And then you take everything from the first list and you slide it over to the second because that's what we want to see when we go to the theater. That's what we want to see when we turn on the TV. That's what we want to see when we go to the movies. We want, we want to see other people being honest about what the human experience is. And that's not where I came from. In college, I remember a very competitive environment. I remember um, being reminded constantly that I was now among the best and the brightest. And it just, it just sucked the air right out of it. It felt, it felt like there was very little room for error in that model. Uh, that any sign of, of vulnerability would be perceived as a weakness. Especially in the States, there seems to be a lot of emphasis on happiness and how can you achieve happiness. For me, happiness does not seem like a particularly realistic goal. I set my sights on being content, and then if I happen to experience happiness, great. Um, Self-expression is huge. Having a, a container in which to put what is boiling up inside of you, your, your, your anger, your fear, your guilt, your shame, um, finding ways to get that out. Maybe it's on paper, maybe it's on a canvas, maybe it's a, a jog around the school track. Just get it out of you. As soon as it bubbles up, work to get it out. Make sure that you are talking to yourself in a way that is loving and supportive. Uh, it became clear to me at a certain point in my life, I've had, I've had friendships. I've been, <laughs> I've been a good friend to people. And when a friend is in crisis, I know how to be there for them. I know how to hold uh, a space that looks like listening. Um, it looks like support. It looks like a back and forth. Maybe it just looks like a hug. Maybe it looks like being silent and just holding their hand. I know how to do that for a friend. I realize that when I am in crisis, when I have quote unquote fucked up, my response is, you fucking idiot. You know, um, how could you? Of course, what did you expect? If I spoke to my friends like I used to speak to myself, I would have no friends. So what I started to pay attention to was how I spoke to myself out loud and in my head. And in your head is a much more difficult conversation, but you can, uh, I think, I judge, um, control the words that come out of your mouth. So if you do talk to yourself out loud, and I do, make sure that the words are loving and supportive and nourishing. Start the work of being your own best friend. Uh, the money does not bring happiness. That's, that's my answer to that question. Um, the money can take care of a lot. Uh, the money can handle certain things. Does it bring uh, a sense of self-worth? No. Does it bring a sense of uh, self-satisfaction? No. In fact, um, it's, it's easy to, to feel a sense of, of letdown, uh, of, of betrayal, because I was raised to, to glamorize Hollywood as were we all, to think of it as fame and fortune and parties, and that once I got a taste of that, everything would be fine. And then I discovered that uh, it wasn't fine, actually. Um, it, even, it even highlighted all of the ways that it was not fine. I remember in college, 
And one of the messages I, one of the messages, messages I felt like I was sitting with was, um, do it beautifully or don't do it at all. And if, and if and when you do it beautifully, don't tell anyone what went into that. So if someone asks you, you know, did you study for that test, the answer is always no. But you'd been studying for, th for three weeks or even three months prior. So when you got that A, it just looks easy. Um, that's bullshit <laughs> and <laughs> deeply unhelpful. So to practice forgiveness, to expand my definition of what right looks like so that I can work with that um, so I don't feel shame for putting myself out there, uh, forgiving myself for trying and having it not work out. All of these things are very important. I know someone who, for example, um, decided to go to law school and then after a few months thought, this is not for me. And they made what I thought was a very brave decision, which was to get out of that thing that they realized was not for them, as opposed to stay in it um, because of appearances. And I know other people who went to law school, graduated, and on the other side are like, fuck, I hate the law. <laughs> but now I've got this degree, and I've got student debt, and I guess I gotta see this thing out. And to hear them speak of their life in that way uh, makes me sad. That's, that's not a road that I would choose for myself. So don't be afraid to, to try and have it not work out. That's part of success. Because it's one thing to be depressed or have to deal with anxiety. It's another to also have to work to cover that constantly. And I spent a great deal of my life pouring a lot of time and energy into covering, into into pretending that everything was fine. And now I don't have to do that. Like that time and energy I can now put somewhere else. And that's been huge for me personally and creatively. Success for me is feeling like I'm in alignment with myself. That is success. I'm sitting in my truth. I'm speaking to my truth. How to achieve that? Um, practice. Speaking your, your truth takes practice and forgiveness. Forgiving yourself for not getting it right, whatever that is, quote unquote. Forgiving yourself for not doing it beautifully. Because I, I want to reach two people, myself and someone else. That page exists to expand my own awareness, um, to service my own education. And then I hope that someone out there who might not even press the like button, who might not ever comment, is also going to resonate with what it is I have to share and say.